right, guys, here we have the Vivor button making machine that I received to do a review on. I am loving it. I will say it right now. It is very heavy. When it comes out of the box, the only assembly is required is screwing on this base plate. And I assume if you want to have this permanently stationed somewhere, you could just mount it directly to a workstation. You also receive in all different, but, ow, that's a needle, two different sizes, the 1.25 and the 2.25. You get all the pieces you need. So the metal back, you'll get plastic back, and then you'll get the little silver bases in both sizes. So you get plenty of supplies to get you going. We are going to build a button together. I actually, I'm going to use the plastic back because I haven't done that yet. I'll show you the metal backs that I have used. But, oops, we'll put this one away in its right spot. But I did want to show you. So when you get it, you'll get your directions. Kind of goes over how to put it together. I did watch a video as well. You will also receive in this package two circle cutting devices for the two different size buttons that you'll have. And these are great. You can also do some measuring to make bigger circles if you want, but I it came with these two. And for what I'm doing, this circle right here is the exact circumference that you want to cut and measure. So it is larger than the finished button because you need to be able to wrap things around. So the finished button will be 1.25. You also will get some washers, some extra blades, two Allen wrenches, and then you'll receive some white backing. I don't know if that's maybe to put behind if you're going to do something with some clear paper or vellum. You get your shiny toppers for all the sides, and then you'll get this spacer ring, and there's actually two of them, and it tells you on the front of the machine what size so basically it's if you're using this size which is the larger and a metal back you need to use this spacer ring i'm not so i don't but this is what the finish of that size looks like okay so we're going to put these away and show you some more and then we'll get back to that okay so once you're together you're done i mean that's the extent of it you also get this base here, and these go in the back. So they go in towards the back. And then you get these little screws. And what these little screws will do is keep this from sliding off when you go to put it on. But you gotta take it off to put your two different size dies on. So these come with it as well. These are both the different size button makers for the top of the button. So this is your 2.25 and this is your 1.25. We're gonna make a 1.25. They go on exactly the same. There is a little ridge right here that lines up with a ridge underneath. So you just go in and give it a push and now it's in. If you wanna take it out, you squeeze it up and you just pull down. You just, I just push the bottom up and pull it down. So there's no, ooh, there's no like locking mechanism as other than itself. So you got that. Now I put my screw in on this side all the way because I won't need to touch that one. This one is flat and it's a tongue and groove situation here. Now if I just shove this it's going to stop because on the back side you've got this that turns it as it needs to be turned. So what you'll have to do is raise that up, get it to the center, and then I like to tighten this screw right here and it just keeps it when I show you from a top view when we go to make a button it shows um, it stops it from sliding off when you're going back and forth and having this in the back lines up with this bar that's in the back which will make everything line up perfectly if you follow the directions and on here 
you've got these arrows. That's your center front, your center bottom, center sides. You line them up with the arrow because when it moves over, it's going to turn it slightly. And the same thing on this, ooh, sorry, on this side, when you go to put your back, these are going to turn it slightly so everything lines up properly. So I will show you if I can find that one again. Where'd I put it? I didn't line it up properly the first time. I just made them straight and you see how off kilter my button is? It's off to the side because I didn't follow the arrows. This was just a practice and you'll, there's plenty in here to practice with. So honestly, it's done. Setup is complete. I've already cut out my circles. And what I did is I measured the piece I measured this and it's two and three quarters inch. And then I went into Cricut because I want to eventually print and cut. I did a two and three quarter circle and then I filled it with my design, how I wanted it to look. Um, I cut these out manually because I'm just doing a couple to show you um, on that. The progression kind of, you're going to want to practice. So I made some <laughs> three mistakes with the sizing, getting them lined up. This one, I don't even know what I did, but you know, you're gonna practice. And then finally, the fourth time was the charm, and I got the button exactly what I wanted. And we're gonna switch our angle. We're gonna go from the top down. I'm just looking for my piece of vellum, or this is plastic. I assume these little white discs that came with it are in case you wanna use like clear paper on the back. I have to get these apart. There we go. They are kind of, they, they were cut as one, I'm sure. So they're a little together, but I don't want to waste any. So I just leave them in their still zip bag. And then I'm leaving them in this little container. Everything, all the pieces that go to this, including the heavy piece. This is heavy, just so you know. But I don't want to lose my pieces. Oh, and also, uh, you'll get, oops, a book with some cutouts. They're just pandas, but you can to practice. And that's my first practice. So let's get you changed position and we are going to make a button for you. Okay, we're at the top view. So here's the handle. Sorry, my base doesn't go up high enough, but we'll make it work. So this is what you're going to look down upon. And if you can see right here, let me see if I can get a better Let's see. Yep. Right here are your arrows. So you're going to go in at an angle on this side and the same over here. So we'll start on this side. And the first thing you will lay down is your metal base for your button. That just sits right in there and it actually drops into a reduced area or a, you know, seated area. Here is the center. I happen to know that my center, I want between these two words. So they're lined up with my arrow. And then I'm going to drop my clear cellophane on top. And that's going to make it like a, an actual button. Then we're going to come over here and I'll move that. But you see the arrow over here is kind of at that angle. So you have the back. This is the side that will face your peeps. This is the back side. You drop it in, and then you do the best you can to line up this vertically. So you want it to go, you know, line up on either side and with that. So if I go this way, I don't think that works real well. I want it facing, I've been lining mine up to face this. Okay, so everybody's in where they're supposed to be. You come over here. We're all, all of our pieces, make sure. Yes, all of our pieces are in. You give this a push. On the first one, it does not go all the way down. It goes about halfway down. You give it a good snug. And when I slide this over, you'll notice that it's missing. It's up inside the device. Come over here. Make sure again that your back is lined up with that. You come over here. It's all, oops, sorry, all the way over. This one will go all the way down. You want to make sure you give it a good press all the way. Lifts up. Slide it over, and there's your button. And there we go. Perfect button. 
And this one happens to be on a plastic back, which is cool. And it's all tucked, oops, all snug. Oh, well, I lost it. But it's the same as this one, but this one is on a metal back. So the metal back has some more play. So depending what you want it to do, but that's what it looks like. And that's as simple as that to make buttons galore. This is a great solid machine. It's nice and heavy. Your pieces are all attached. You have your notes. It's telling you what to do. It even says on the front, left mold, press first, second. These little arms back here, move your picture so everything is lined up properly. This is a quality machine and it's definitely worth the price if you're planning on making buttons like I am. So I hope that was helpful and I will talk to you later. Bye.